Hi, this is a part two of my reviews on my Greek New Testaments and Greek study helps. Um, I just covered the Zondervan Reader's New Testament, um, its pros and cons, and it's, a, it's very thin. That's what's one of the good things about it. Um, the text is kind of, there's some things I would change about the text, but overall it's readable and I'm happy with it. So there's that one. Um, and then this I just actually got in today. It's the uh, UBS Greek New Testament. It's Nessel Allen's Reader's Edition. Um, it is also hardback. I think it's 30 bucks on Amazon or ChristianBook.com. It's put out by Hendrickson. Um, again, it's you know kind of like a faux grain on the hardback. I actually like it though a lot. Um, another Smithson binding. Very well done. Nicely smith sewn. Um, haven't really. It's it's much thicker paper than you're getting on either of these two. These pages are very thin. Um, this is like um, I don't even know what to compare it to. Maybe a ESB thin line, a crossway, and this is. I don't even know what to compare it to. I feel like it's going to rip right away. I'm afraid to turn the pages too quick, so... Um, anyway, that one's really thin. This one's thinner. Still fine. And this one's nice, thick paper. This is showing way more bleed-through and show-through of the, of the words on the next page than actually is seen with the naked eye. Um, again, you've got your table of contents. Your preface, which I've read through, I'm sure it's interesting. Introduction, abbreviation. And then it gets right into the text. Let's open up into a place that's um, going to have a lot of notes. Let me see where this thing shines. The difference between these two is really going to be seen in this area. So the text on this, I think, is much crisper much bigger, much darker, and then this text. So you can really see the difference in text there. Again, these are gilt edges on the UBS readers. It's just plain white edges, unless you get the uh, crossway has a calfskin and a, um, I think just regular genuine leather bindings. But again, another place where this is going to shine is so you know what IPAN means, it's, you see IPAN and then 12, and you can come right down here and immediately, boom, 12 sticks out. So, much easier to find things, whereas on 42, I have to, try, okay, find it, find it, 42. I mean, this is doable, there's nothing wrong with this, um, it's just preference, I... I still read out of this one, and probably going to read out of this one a lot too, just because they're two different texts. This is the Nestle Allen's underlying the ESV, and uh, a few other Bibles. This uh, just underlines the NASB or the NIV and the TNIV. So I really like this um, text a lot better. I like the helps on the bottom a lot better, and the text is straighter. Whereas in this one's more italicized. I guess in the first one it was so italicized that you really couldn't even read it. Whereas this one um, is great. I really, I'm really excited to get into this one. Um, we go in the back. They have a much, much bigger dictionary. So the dictionary of words that occur more than 30 times in the New Testament. That's what this one also has, but very short as I showed you in the previous video. This one has a much bigger dictionary, just alphabetical alpha. Um, they've got almost two pages for alpha, beta, go all the way through, gamma, delta. So this has got quite a few pages of dictionary that uh, you're going to spend less time looking up in a lexicon than you would with this one. Um, because not only do you have the helps on the bottom, 
which I forgot to mention, also have parsing in them. So they, they have some parsing in there to help you, so you don't have to bust out your parsing guide and also help you with not having to be in the lexicon so much with the helps. But um, the same here, even more common words that um, you might have forgotten and you're rusty on, they have in the back here, and a lot more of them to help you than the um, Zondervan readers. This one has advertisements in the back, that's exciting. Um, so I know what I need to buy next, because nothing's ever enough, right? Um, <laughs> and then maps, again, I find them exceedingly useless. But this is very nice, it has a golden ribbon that matches the golden tail and headbands, which I find to be very pleasing. The ribbon feels very cheap, it's already frayed. Uh, it was actually much longer when I first got it, but I, uh, it was fraying so bad that I tried to burn it and the thing lit on fire like a, you know, like something doused in gasoline, so. <clears throat> Other than that, I might just, <coughs> excuse me, I might just pull this ribbon out altogether, I'm not sure yet. So, those are the actual New Testaments I have. Some other helps I have are some interlinears. I just recently picked this one up. Um, some money I had laying around. I was pretty happy to be able to come get this one. It's the ESV English Greek Reverse Interlinear. And what's really cool about this one is most interlinearals has the Greek in the proper order with the English all messed up on top of it. This one keeps the ESV 2007 text on top and then shows you how they translate it, what words they used in the Greek um, by reordering it. So you'll see in Jesus answered him, it's actually, they put the second word, which is Jesus, Epeklite is one, so this should be reversed. Then Auto is five, three. They have it way out of order. Um, but they show you the letters so you know and I'm not going to explain all these different arrows and everything they they explain all that in the front but I highly recommend that you know if you're studying or teaching and you can't um, you're not scholarly enough and well versed enough within the New Testament Greek to be able to pull out just a Greek New Testament or a lexicon and be able to tell your people this isn't the first or second person this is a verb blah 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 it has all the parsing here for you it shows you you know what order they translate it in and why they translate it especially if you're using the ESV this is brilliant um, it gives you the Strong's number on the bottom so you could look it up the actual root word in your Strong's dictionary or lexicon that follows the Strong's um, it's not a sewn binding it's glued but most of Crossway's glued bindings past and present actually have seemed to hold up very well um, on the bottom, it gives you, you know, a guide to these to these letters you see here, which is very helpful, um, and differences that you'll see in the Nestle Allen's 27 versus this, the Nestle Allen's 28. So that's the Greek text you're going to find in here is the Nestle Allen's 28. Um, nothing in it besides the Bible. It's pretty thick, nice thick paper. Um, again, in the introduction, you're going to find everything you need for understanding the rest of it. And another interlinear I have is Hebrew, Greek, English, put out by Hendrickson. And don't know what green is. <laughs> it's coded with Strong's concordance numbers. Um, Hebrew, Greek, English. This one is. Um, obviously it's going to have the Hebrew, it's going to be the same exact text as I showed you previously in this. They're put up by this, uh, this is the same text that the Trinitarian Bible Society uses um, here and here. So it's going to be the same text, which is the Texas Receptus. And obviously I'm in the Hebrew, let's go to the Greek. Some of the Greek words. Again, they're in the same font, and everything has the Trinitarian Bible Society. They have the Strong's letters and the literal def or the little readings in English underneath, which is confusing to read. And then their own translation put into English syntax, 
on the side. I don't know how helpful you'll find those. They have some notes on the bottom to help you, frequent wording, things like that. I haven't really gotten into it that much for those reasons. I mostly just use it to when preparing a Bible study or studying my Bible for my own devotional purposes. Um, flip it open and go, okay, you know, the first, what is that word? Protes. I have no idea why the ending's that way. That's what I used to think. I mean, I'm trying to learn that. Look it up in the Strong's and try to make sure I'm using the word correctly. Um, so there's that interlinear. And I have some helps in the back. Uh, like differences between the Nestle Allens and the Texas Receptus. This is actually pretty interesting. They'll go through and show you, you know, what the Texas Receptus, this text has rendered it, and what um, what the Nestle Allens rendered it, and why they're different. Kind of helps you. So these are all the differences, the majority changes. Blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot in there that I haven't really gotten into too much. And in the beginning, there's more information. They've got how to pronounce. This is actually where I started um, learning Greek on my own, just because I wanted to sound out the letters and stuff, and it gave me literally how to sound them out phonetically and so I would go in and absolutely destroy words by trying to pronounce them phonetically with no accents or tenses and it wasn't pretty but that's where my journey started I'm trying to learn Greek on my own and now I found lots of helps and I'm trying to probably next semester I'm currently enrolled in Moody Bible Institute I'm probably going to take Greek online but I don't know how well that's going to go um, online as opposed to in a class I'll give you some information on translations Blah, blah, blah. Nothing too interesting or useful for me, anyway. My personal opinion. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this one and make a part three for some of my helps that I have. God bless.